Hello everyone, welcome to the SQRT channel. In this video, I'm going to take a problem from American Regions Mathematics Leagues from 1997. In this problem, we have just a simple equation. On the left hand side, we are going to have the cubic root of the cubic root of 2 minus 1. But on the right hand side, we have sum of three terms. Each term is a third root of a number. For the first one, we have the third root of A, and then the third root of B, and then the third root of C. We know that A, B, and C are rational numbers. We are going to find the values of A, B, and C. This problem is a tricky one. So bear with me to see how we are going to solve this. For the sake of completeness, this is the original problem. As you see, everything is similar as we explained. Now we are going to deep dive into the solution. To solve this, I'm going to start with using x for what I have on the left hand side. And then, because I have this third root of 2, I'm going to use y for that. If we do this, then x is going to be the third root of y minus 1 or simply x cubed is going to be y minus 1. On the other hand, we can say that y cubed is going to be 2. These are simple things that we are going to start with, but because we are going to have a lot of equations, I'm going to number them. We have 1 and 2 for the two equations that you are seeing here. Now let's start with equation 2. Remember, we had y cubed equals to 2. If we subtract 1 from both sides, we can say that y cubed minus 1 is going to be 1. And then we just use a simple identity. And at the end, you can see that y minus 1 is going to be 1 over y squared plus y plus 1. Let's name this equation as the third equation. I'm going to take what we have here and try to connect it to what we saw. To do this, I'm going to start with y squared plus y plus 1. I want to simplify it a little bit further. To do this, I'm going to multiply that by 3 and then divide it by 3. Then, for the top of this fraction, I have 3y squared plus 3y plus 3. Let's divide 3 into 2 plus 1 and then replace 2 with y cube. Then what I have in the top of this fraction is simply y plus 1 to the power of 3. So overall, I ended up with y squared plus y plus 1 is basically power of 3 of y plus 1 over 3. Let's name this equation as equation 4. Now it's time to review what we have. We already have four equations. I'm going to review them to see how we are going to connect these pieces together. First of all, we started with defining x as what we need to find, and then we showed that x cubed is y minus 1. That's equation number 1. Then we used y for the third root of 2 and showed that y cubed is 2. That's equation number 2. We simplified equation number 2. We showed that y minus 1 is going to be 1 over y squared plus y plus 1. That's equation number 3. Now, we focus on what we have for the denominator in equation 3. We showed that that denominator can be written as y plus 1 to the power of 3 over 3. That's equation number 4. Now, putting equation number 3 and equation number 4 together, you can see that y minus 1 can be written as 3 over y plus 1 to the power of 3. However, we already showed that in equation number 1, y minus 1 is x cubed. So, replacing that, we are going to have x equals to the third root of 3 over y plus 1. That's equation number 5. This is something that we are going to continue with. 
However, I'm going to use another trick. First of all, remember y3 was 2 because we had that in equation 2. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. Then y3 plus 1 is going to be 3. Replacing that with an identity, you're going to see that 1 over y plus 1 can be written as y squared minus y plus 1 over 3. Why do we need this? You are going to see that in a bit. Remember what we found in equation 5? We found x is the third root of 3 over y plus 1. And also we found that 1 over y plus 1 can be written as y squared minus y plus 1 over 3. That's equation 6. Putting these two together, you simply see that x over the third root of 3 is going to be y squared minus y plus 1 over 3. This is something that I was looking for. Let's take a look at what we have here. This is very important to understand. Remember what was x? x basically was what I was looking for, right? We defined x to be the left-hand side of the original problem. Now I have that x here. And also, I have another variable, y. But I already know that y to the power of 3 is 2. That's based on equation 2 here. So I have x based on a series of values. And that's a good thing. I'm going to use that and finally solve the problem. How I'm going to do that? That's simple. First of all, let's start with what we found. We found that x over the third root of 3 is y squared minus y plus 1 over 3. Now I'm going to just replace y with the third root of 2. Obviously, y squared is going to be the third root of 4, y is going to be the third root of 2, and we are going to have the rest. Multiplying both sides by the third root of 3, I'm going to end up with x. Now, I just need to simplify this to finally find the outcome. I'm going to write 3 as the third root of 27 and simplify that with the third root of 3. If we do this, then we are going to end up with the third root of 9 for the denominator. x is going to be an expression that you are seeing here. However, x was something that I was looking for. In the original problem, x is written as the third root of a plus the third root of b plus the third root of c. So I need to find a, b, and c here. Obviously, a is going to be the third root of 4 over 9. So a is going to be 4 over 9. b is going to be negative 2 over 9. And c is going to be 1 over 9. And we found a, b, and c to satisfy the equation that you have here. And that's all we needed to do. I hope you enjoyed the content that we have in this video. In this video, the problem was a little bit tricky. If you'd like to see other problems, problems from different math competitions or puzzles that involve math,